15 plus years ago now. It's crazy to think about. <laughs> I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Uh, yep. When you were creating your characters, did you get them from the Um, well, every time I'm creating uh, brand new characters, uh, it's always kind of a mix of, uh, I, I read the script and I figure out like what kind of person that person is, and then in my mind I start to think about uh, other people that I've known in my life that are similar to that, or that I can use as like a touchstone uh, for the design. So yeah, a lot of times they're based on either like, family members or people in my life or friends or whatever. Um, sometimes they're, you know, they might have an actor in mind. Uh, but it helps for me to have something that I can use as like a, um, just like a base model, you know? So I might have to like, recreate something from scratch in my head every time I have to draw a person. So. I have some loose basis at all. So during the creative process of drawing the comic and the character, do you use that? Um, yeah, I mean, when I'm working on this, I do a lot of music, but um, my, my playlists are fairly you know, frenetic. I listen to everything from, you know, uh, 80s and 90s hip hop. 2000s trip hop stuff. Um, a lot of I listen to a lot of like, uh, classic country and outlaw country, like modern alt country stuff. Um, black and white, you name it. I've listened to that. I've to that. kind of all. Anything particular that you listen to when you're doing the first issue? Do you recall? Uh, I don't know. I was in like a weird transition phase. I was just kind of getting back into country at the time. Um, so I was listening to a lot of bluegrass and, uh, and like over a country guys like Jamie Brown and uh, um, uh, yeah, Chris Christopherson, you know, all, all, all of the outlaw country guys, I was listening to those guys, and then like, uh, yeah, bluegrass with these guys and all that, but I was also still like really heavy into uh, like trip hop stuff, guys like uh, Dan the Automator, Prince Paul and stuff like that. So it was like a weird mix. Yeah. Now, do you prefer uh, color comics or sort of black and white? I know you're talking about it's not black and white, but you also do the like, covers as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whenever possible, I try to do all of the art uh, from start to finish. Um, just because I, I, I feel like you get um, a purer voice in the one person. But um, as far as like, do I prefer color versus black and white? Like, uh, in a color comic, it's really easy to tell everybody apart because you can just give this guy a red shirt, this guy a blue shirt, this guy, you know. Uh, in a black and white comic, you don't have that. So you gotta rely on the design of the character a lot more. You gotta make sure that everybody has like a distinctive silhouette, you know. They all gotta be shaped different, they gotta have different shaped faces, they gotta have different haircuts, you know. You gotta look as different in every way from each other as possible because you don't know. With one panel, you might be looking at their shadow, or you might be looking at just their face. And you don't, you know, you gotta have every level of zooming in and out has to have something iconic about it that can set each character apart. And that's a lot of thinking uh, when it comes into the design parts. I would assume a lot of shade and taste. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it gets tricky trying to develop like skin tone and stuff like that. Nope. Um, nope. Yeah. Now, who are the people that like, basically influenced you into the comics? I would say I, I'm, I'm kind of a weird mix of influences. Um, I, I learned to read from Mad Magazine when I was a kid, so those. Uh, those cartoonists are my like pantheon of heroes. Uh, guys like um, 
uh, Will Elder, Jack Davis, John Severin, uh, the like classic DC comics, the guys that did Tales from the Crypt. Uh, those were the guys who went on to do Mad Magazine like shortly after. And that's the guys that I looked up to the most. But I'm also a kid of the 90s, so guys like Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane and all that stuff has left a huge mark on me. And, um, and then as I got older, um, you know, more underground stuff, um, you know, guys like um, Chrome and like the Zap Comics guys. Um, so like, I've got a, a lot of weird different influences all swirled together. Yeah. That's awesome. Any particular superhero or character that you like that you didn't draw? Um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not particularly like a superhero guy, uh, but I mean, my, my first Marvel gig I ever got to do was Ghost Rider, um, which was like my favorite. My, yeah, that's a, probably half the reason I wanted to draw comics as a kid anyway. So, um, so getting to do that was huge childhood wish fulfillment. And I love drawing like monsters and weirdos and psychopaths, so. That's fortunately been what Marvel's asked me to do uh, my whole my whole time there in this last 15 years. Yeah, I, I saw the uh, Hulk Marines number two variant. Oh yeah, there, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Like oh, the idea and the concept. Yeah, all the like, gnarlier characters. You know, like, I, mean, I, I love drawing Wolverine because he's rough and tumble. Uh, Deadpool. Like, anytime I can take Deadpool's mask off, I love drawing that. It's like a more handsome Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, all, all the like, you know, any other monsters, you know, my, my entire Punisher run was all Marvel's monsters back to like the pre-Marvel Atlas era of comics. Uh, we just pulled them all out and played with them. So I, I had a field day with that, I loved it. Now, during the time that you were doing the Walking Dead, you know, those first issues, uh, who is the hardest to draw out of all the characters? Um, the hardest, the hardest characters to draw, I think, um, I, know, I mean, I guess it might have been, it might have been, well, the females are always the hardest for me, because I, I can draw, like, the gnarliest, grossest old guys, <laughs> and it's, it's easy, because, like, you know, I can just, if I mess them up a little bit, like, it just makes them look cooler, but if I'm drawing a pretty girl, you only got about five lines to draw the face, and it has to be graceful. And if you start overdoing it, then it's start getting like overaged or you know overly haggard. And you know sometimes that's the right thing to do, but sometimes it's not. And it's kind of uh, for me, it's like surgery, and it's not a surgery that I feel that I'm particularly good at. So I have to uh, like really focus <laughs> anytime I'm drawing uh, pretty girls. We were just speaking before we came on, and you were required to do something about Daryl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you're saying how that's a little, sort of a challenge for the fact that you got to think of Norman Reedus, or that you want to try to do something more original. Yeah, well, yeah, someone uh, just commissioned me to draw a picture of Daryl, but as he would have been in the comics had I created him. Um, so that's a weird... That's so cool. It's a like weird that. thought to try to wrangle because it's hard for me to divorce Daryl from Norman Reedus. So I had to think like, well, what would a non-Norman Reedus Daryl look like? And I, I just had to like, kind of get to the nugget of what Daryl is as a character and, uh, and then kind of build him out from that, which is pretty much what I do anytime I'm drawing uh, like corporate characters, you know, like when I had to draw like Doctor Strange or you know, anybody at Marvel, I try to figure out like what was the nugget of the idea that made it cool, and then we'll like build it back out from there because you know most of those characters have had so many iterations, so many like definitive iterations that I have to figure out like what's my take. Um, so, awesome. what do you like to draw for fun? Like just for casual, nothing that's work based. Um. Usually if I'm sitting and doodling, uh, it, it usually turns out to be um, like cowboys, uh, like I love drawing Jonah Hex, uh, he's got a great face to draw. Uh, a lot of times it turns into like 
Frankenstein or Swamp Thing. I like drawing all those swamp monsters. There's like a hundred swamp monster comics from the 70s and 80s. I love drawing all those guys. Uh, so anytime I'm doodling, it usually turns into one of those things. Yeah, I was, I, my first fix is uh, actually man, man Thing. Oh, oh so sure. I like that. I, I, I like the Swamp Thing, but Man Thing is... Oh, yeah, yeah. The fact that it looks like a Muslim Yeah. <laughs> So, now, you are working, probably working on new stuff, what are you working on now? Um, well, I've got some creator-owned horror stuff in the pipes. Um, it's not quite to a stage where I feel comfortable talking about it uh, publicly, but um, I've also been at Marvel, like I said, for the last probably 15, uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, um, I've been doing cover work for them. I just wrapped up the uh, Punisher Kill Crew covers, uh, which has been super fun. It's just Frank Castle basically as a Frank Frazetta character, um, just full on like Dungeons and Dragons fantasy stuff uh, with the Punisher. And it's super fun. Well, do you have anything that you read for yourself that is not up in the for you? But no, not obviously, you can mention all the characters from Marvel, mm -hmm. the Punisher, obviously. You but what do you like to read yourself in comparison? That's the thing. It might be, it uh, might be a little different. I, I read, I've been reading a lot of Japanese horror. Uh, Junji Ito is probably my favorite. Um, he's probably the best in the, in the game. Uh, I've been obsessed with him for the last several years. And so it's nice that, that more and more of his work has become translated and published over here. So I don't have to hunt so hard on the internet for it. Um, with some other guys, uh, Shintaro Kago is really awesome. Uh, uh, Hideshi you know, I, I've been reading a lot of yeah, Japanese horror stuff. Uh, just because it's, I don't know, it has a way of getting under your skin in a way that uh, American horror really doesn't. You know, I, As a kid, when I was getting into horror stuff, I would watch horror movies, and it was like an endurance test for me. I would see how much of it I could take. I would sit there like, you know, white knuckle grip the couch and see like how long I could stand it. And then when it was over, I'd go lay down in my bed and just stare at the ceiling and think about how fucked up it was uh, for days. And as I got older, I'm more and more numb to that feeling. And so it's that's the dragon that I chase. I'm looking for horror that gives me that feeling again. And uh, Asian horror is really what is giving me that. It's more conceptual. It's more... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It, it. It's more of a concept rather than like a jump scare, you know. In comics, you can't have somebody jump out from behind something scary anyway. It's on paper. Um, so they do more conceptual horror that really sticks with you for a while. And more of a thrill that's going to, that's going to have to be instead of the actual jump scare itself. So. Yeah, and it's, uh, yeah, it, that and just like, just really weird conceptual stuff that you just like, that was that's messed up, and then you just keep thinking about it like for days afterwards. The part of the tone, yeah, I mean, that's 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 yeah, I love it. <laughs> cool. So obviously, you're over by very young by the rest of the actors. So I suggest everybody to go out there. Yep, I'm Tony. back over here in the far corner. Tony's been drawing. You can actually see him do that live, and I recommend everybody to go out there and visit him. And get an autograph, and possibly, you know, take him up on you know, the sketch for you. So, thanks, Donnie. Thanks for having me. Cheers.